It has been quite a while since I've been here um, posting a vlog. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Akram Tagavi Burris, and you're watching Akram's Ideas, bringing creative and crazy ideas to life. In case you don't remember me, it has been quite a while since I've been here um, posting a vlog. Uh, but of course, like I said in the intro, I'm Akram, and this is Akram's Ideas, uh, where I share with you my sewing adventures and other crafty stuff. Now, um, as I mentioned for longtime followers, or if you're new to the channel, um, I have been kind of absent the last, oh gosh, three months or so. And um, I thought I would start off with a off the cuff and other stuff episode where I just do a little chatty catch up video of what's been going on. Um, some sewing that I've done and some sewing plans that I have as well. So let's start off like, I guess let's start off with my hair. I just colored it. And so I colored it myself from a box color. So growing up, if, if you don't know, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before in the vlog, my parents were cosmetologists. So they had their own salon and um, they did hair. And so since I was a teenager, I've had everything color of hair. Um, my natural hair is a little darker than this, obviously. It's a little more brown. And um, I haven't really colored my hair in a long, long time. My parents, they said they would do my hair if I wanted, but they're two hours away. And you know, like my mom's got arthritis. I don't want her to have to stand there doing my hair. And and I saw while making my Walmart order online that I could get a box of hair color. And I thought, you know, my parents did my hair for so many years, it can't be that hard. Um, especially with a box color, right? People do that all the time. So um, I did it. Um, the color is called brown sugar. It's a lot lighter um, in the sun than it is in here in the room. And um, I can really see like the copper tones on the top here. I feel like I may have not gotten enough color. I used two boxes, but I didn't really use all of the second box. But I feel like I could have gotten more on the on the bottom half just to give it more of that copper look because I really like how the copper looks at the top um so I don't know you can give your thoughts and opinions what what would you think of it if you if you like it I I just wanted I wanted something to hide the gray and I wanted something a little bit lighter so I, I like it I don't think it's that bad for my first try and it was a cream color so you know it wasn't all that messy I mentioned working from online and I mentioned this in the last vlog that I did, which I think way back in August. Um, I, I think it was the sew a top where we had the sew a top challenge. And um, that was the last vlog that I did. I mean, it's been so long. And so that was at the end of August and school had really just started at that point. And like I said, all my classes are online. And if you're new to the channel, I teach at the University of Tulsa, I teach computer simulation and gaming. In, it's a fancy way of saying video game design. Uh, it's in the Department of Computer Science. So I teach a little bit of programming along with a 3D modeling, animation, and those types of things. And this was the first time the entire, all my courses were gonna be online. Now I've taught online courses before, but not these specific courses. And I'd been making video tutorials to help the students go through some of that. And it got hugely time consuming. I, I was staying up till 3 a.m. some nights because I've got to like record the steps and then I have to play it back and I had to edit it. At one point, like mid-October, I was like, I can't, I can't stay up making these videos anymore. So I started having to resort to finding other people's tutorials 
uh, online. I do intend to go back and, and make some more uh, of my own f um, for my students. I've got a, if you're interested, there's a YouTube channel out there called Get Creative Today, um, where I've been posting for, for my students on uh, 3ds Max, which is our 3D modeling software, and then game design. Unity is what we use. I'm recording to you this uh, at the last week of classes, actually. We, a uh, last official week of classes. We go into dead week next um, next week, which is the week. We don't actually have classes, but it's a, a week for students to study for the final. Um, and I don't actually give a final exam in my courses. I give a final project. So basically, they got to make a working game by the end of, in two weeks um, after this point. So... Yeah, this is the first time I've had, like, mindset where I could actually record a vlog. And the last little bit is that, um, along with all the classwork and stuff that I've been doing, I've also been studying for multiple certifications um, in, in my field of, of game development. I've taken the first certification, and I passed. Yay! Um, but I have another one coming up on January 1, so I am... I haven't really studied yet. Um, <laughs> I've been so busy with getting the class stuff and getting everything graded, so the next week, since we're kind of in dead week, I'm going to attempt to start really nailing down and studying for that, and I also got a new book uh, for the certification. It's a prep book, so... Hopefully, I will do good with that and get that knocked out. We will we will see. Hopefully, I can do my best. One of the other little things um, that I have, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So, I've just kind of pinned this up here. This is actually some contact paper that I got at Walmart. And uh, I don't know if many of you, like, watch Lindsay from Inside the Ham. About a year ago or so, in her previous apartment, she put up some sticky wallpaper. And it was a floral print, and I really liked it. And I found this, you know, contact paper, which could do the same thing. Um, and I thought, you know, what if I put it up on my wall? Um, my husband thinks that I'll get tired of it. This is just my auxiliary room, my pattern room, which I still haven't given you a full tour, but that's because it is a mess. I kid you not. It's kind of a slash storage room. Uh, but I thought maybe I could like have some sort of accent wall here. And I've just taped up a little strip to kind of get an idea of what I think about it. Uh, so I'd love your opinion as to what you guys think. Do you think this looks good or do you think it's going to get too repetitive? because it's like this. And I think, now that I look at it, I think I've got it upside down. Yeah. I think I have it upside down. But, let me... So this is what it looks like. And, um, so if you have a thought about... Yeah, I've got that one upside down, apparently. But if you have a thought whether you think I should go ahead and attempt doing this, let me know in the comments, because I'm, I'm tempted to do it, so. Uh, just to brighten up the room and do something different on this back wall. So, what have I been up to? Like I said, I didn't really have any Sojo Mojo. So, about the time in October when I was having my meltdown of like, I can't keep making these videos, I decided to pick up knitting again for the second time. So I think last October I had come across a kit for two dollars um, at an antique store and um, I attempted it but the kit was really just a cheapy kit and the yarn was really bad and it just kept unraveling and I just kind of put it aside. So I hadn't really done anything with it, uh, but one of my co-workers, because this was last fall, um, had heard that I was trying to learn to knit and that she knits, so she'd given me a bunch of spare yarn, which was actually a much better yarn. Let me see what kind of, I think it was just something she picked up at like Joann's or Hobby Lobby, but it's this sugar and cream yarn. And it's a, it's a, it was a much nicer, it wasn't like cheapy, unravely stuff. And so she'd give me a couple of balls of these. 
And I thought to myself, you know what, I don't really feel like sewing, but I want to get my mind off of everything from work after work, and I want to do something. And so I thought I would go ahead and pick up knitting again. And I, I'm just super impressed <laughs> with my scarf that I have made, okay? I even went and bought some nicer metal uh, needles versus the little plastic ones that came with the other other kit. And I'm using this sort of two-toned uh, blue um, yarn here. Uh, blue is my husband's favorite color, so the goal is that I finish this before Christmas and this is going to be his like winter uh, scarf which I'm super excited about and in case you're wondering about this so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to learn to knit from a book I knew that wasn't going to work so I had to look it up online and I found a YouTube channel called Fiber Flux a lot of her tutorials are actually on crochet, but she does have a few um, on knitting. And one specifically with like absolute beginner knitting a scarf project. And it, it was excellent. It just went through the steps and I'm counting my rows. And that was the thing that I kept screwing up on the first one is that somehow I kept getting like double rows. And so I watched the video a couple of times through and I realized that I was doubling back on myself. And so that was problem number one. But I've managed to uh, keep the 24 rows on the scarf. Um, it is a little loose. I probably should have done a needle. I'm using an 11. I probably should have done a needle or two smaller. Um, just to be a little bit tighter of a weave. Um, I've had to, I've had to unravel this a couple of times. Um, I started over at least once and I've had to unravel a couple of rows and managed to get them back on the needle so I didn't have to start completely over um, because I messed up somewhere. But I've got it to a point where I think I should be able to finish and be successful. I don't know how much knitting I'll actually get to be sharing with you on the channel uh, simply because I, I'm, I'm still not to the point where I can just set and knit and do something else. I have to actually count as I do it just to make sure that I'm doing it right because I get sidetracked. So um, anyway, in, in the short, I'm going to be a very slow knitter. It's just very obvious that that's going to be the case. So as far as sewing goes, I haven't done a whole lot, but I did do a few projects. One of which was this pillowcase here, which I absolutely love. All of the bedspreads that I have have a nautical theme. Our bedroom is all beachy nautical. And uh, I had a bedspread that had like blue and reds of lighthouses. And I had more pillows than I had pillowcases that went with that set and I wanted something to kind of match and I remembered that I had this quilting cotton in my sash and so I pulled it out one night and I just whipped up two pillows and that worked out really really well but then the more I started thinking about it because I had quite a bit of this left over I thought you know what I want to make a quilt that matches this. And um, so I went through my stash. I've found a lot of blues. I found a lot of reds. I still haven't found any of the yellowy gold in my stash to really tie the quilt together. And I really want to do that. But I did do the math to kind of calculate how many pieces I would need, what size. I, I don't want to do an extravagant quilt. I want to do squares and I just want to sew it together. I don't, I, I'm not a quilter by any means. I just am still looking for, like I said, something to match this gold and kind of tie it all together. But I do want a very, very simple quilt. So that, that was kind of done on a whim and the whole quilt thing is a project for another day. But the first weekend of Thanksgiving break, like I said, I did do a lot of work over Thanksgiving break. But that first weekend, I just had had enough. And I said, you know what? I want to go sew. And I um, and I have a whole review video that I'm going to be planning for you. So I don't want to say 
too much about the patterns or, or share with them. They'll be in the other video. But I did end up making the Love Notions Classic Tee. If you'd watched my Sew so a Top video or some of my other videos um, a while back, I've been trying to nail down the perfect t-shirt. And I hadn't had any luck. Not to mention that all the work as far as trying to stay healthy and exercising went out the window um, with this whole pandemic stuff. This whole year has kind of like totally sucked m the energy and motivation out of me. And because of that, things were not fitting like they should. And I just wanted something easy and, and hopefully something that fit. And the Love and Notions uh, classic tee. It is a free t-shirt that you can download on their website, which is even greater. Uh, but it's a great example of Love Notion patterns because it has a full bust piece and a standard bust piece. And I went with the full bust um, for the extra large, I believe, is the size that I made. And um, it worked amazingly. It worked amazingly. And I'll, like I said, I'll tell you the changes because I did have to tweak it a little bit, uh, but the overall fit was so good. So I will be sharing that in an upcoming pattern review of the Love Notions Classic Tee. And this is actually, I've, I've got some Love Notion patterns, but this is the first one that I've actually ever made. And it it, the instructions were amazing. I really liked it. I will be making more Love Notion stuff. Um, I also have the Laundry Day Tea, which is another freebie that you can get if you join the Facebook group. Uh, but I'm, I'm really, let's just say I'm really happy with the Love Notions pattern so far. Another big announcement that I want to share with you, some of you may have already um, seen it out on YouTube, uh, Renata from the Twilight Stitcher is once again hosting the Little Red Dress Challenge. And so if you're unfamiliar, this is a challenge that's been going on like since 2016, I believe. Um, and it's to make a red dress for the holidays. And um, it's been going since 2016. They took a break in 2019, but it's back on this year. And the idea is to make a red dress. Now, ideally, I wanted to do something in Jersey because the fitting makes it a little bit easier. But unfortunately, I don't have any red jersey. Well, I knew I didn't want to just go out and buy some red jersey just for it. But I have a ton, a ton of cotton in my stash. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to make a cotton dress. It'll be fine. And I have a pattern. I'm not going to share with you the pattern because that's the surprise. Um, but I will be like sharing on Instagram kind of the stages as I make the dress. Um, but to see more episodes like this, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to Akram's Ideas, and hit the bell icon to get notified of new episodes. I do want to share with you the fabric. So this is it here. This is um, just a bunch of little hearts uh, on this red. I like, I didn't want to do like a Christmas dress because you really can only wear Christmas dresses in December. I mean, depending on what the pattern was. But I really wanted to do something a little bit more that I could wear any time of the year and on into February for Valentine's. So this red was perfect. Um, I don't know. It's a little see-through. I eh, Maybe not as bad as I thought. Uh, I might line it. I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look at the pattern instructions. But let's just say it is a sort of loose-fitting um, dress. Uh, so it should be fairly easy to fit and um, yeah uh, so that's that's kind of the plan and anybody can join the little red dress challenge you just have to sew up a red dress for yourself and the reveal dates are between December 18th and January 1st so you've got a couple of weeks um, throughout the month of December, really, before you have to share your project on Instagram. I believe there are some prizes involved. 
So I would suggest to check out uh, the Twilight Stitchers channel for all the details. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, so that is on my sewing table. And like I said, this next week is gonna, we're rolling into dead week and then into finals. So I'll have some more time to work on it. And I'm trying to get into this mindset of just working on a project slowly. I. I am one of these people that if I start something, I want to complete it then. Mainly because if I come back to it, I forget what the heck I'm doing or where I was. And I like to finish it really quickly in the sense that I'm, I'm done with that project. I can check it off my list. And I really need to think to myself, I don't have time to do that. I have time only to do this one step. And I need to get into that practice. We shall see if that works well or not. Um, so there's some more sewing that I have to do for this month alone simply because it is the holidays and I make gifts for my family and I have a lot of purses for my mom, my mother-in-law, my sisters, everybody of that. I make a lot of purses for them. So I've got some of those projects planned, uh, but one of the things that I decided to do, um, is I've got a lot of tote bags. So you like go to a conference and you end up with a free tote bag. And I've got several of them. I've actually got several of them in this little bitty size. So this is actually, this is actually an event that um, I coordinate at our school, um, which we've changed the name. So it used to be called the Heartland Gaming Expo, but we've changed it to the Computer Simulation and Gaming Conference. And because of that, these bags are like two years old now and we had a whole bunch of them and we can't give them away because, you know, they have the wrong name and so there's nothing we can do. So they were just sitting in my office, just rotting. And so I've got like, I've got at least 15 of them left. So uh, what I'm thinking, especially like on these red ones and I've got different colored ones, is to, um, I've done this in the past with other bags, is either put a pocket on here or for the holidays, create some sort of ribbon across the top and make this sort of a reusable gift bag. And so that's what I plan to do is make these little reusable gift bags and give them out to everybody. And I think that would be super fun, a great idea, a great way to recycle because they're just a perfect gift bag size. And um, yeah, and I think recycling gift bags, that's a great idea. And so this will just be excellent. So I'm going to get started on making basically like a ribbon this way and a ribbon this way and maybe a little bow so it looks like a present that's been wrapped. And I'm gonna do it in obviously something like in Christmas colors for the red, but I've got like a yellow one that I can put like a pink bow on and make it more Mother's Day-like. So, so the bags can be used not just for Christmas, but for other gifts and holidays. So that's my plan there. If you'd like to see like a tutorial on that of, of how I'm going to refashion these, let me know. I've done a similar tutorial where I made the bag completely from scratch and then put the ribbon on it. This one, obviously the bag's already made for me, so makes it a little bit easier. Um, but if you want like a refresher video or something like that. Uh, so my, one of my other sisters, I've got three of them, so the one in the middle, uh, she asked me if I had any novelty Christmas fabric, and I did, and she really wanted something made for Christmas, and she couldn't decide between these two fabrics that I had in my stash. This one's kind of a candy cane black, and this one's kind of a ornaments one. Anyway, she wanted something made with these, and so I measured the fabrics, because I don't actually have a lot of these fabrics. And the funny thing is, is that I had a lot of some of the other fabrics, but no, these were the two that she's like, oh, I like those. And so I told her, I don't really have enough for a dress. Is there something else you might want? And she was like, what if you made me a Christmas vest? And I said, oh, yeah, I had totally have enough for that. Especially, she's really petite, so it won't be any problem. So I went through my stash, and I found this vintage McCall's pattern here um, that is a vest pattern. And it is in a size 10, uh, which is a 32 and a half inch bust, which 
oddly enough, fits her perfectly. This pattern is exactly her measurements. So, um, give or, give or take a, a half inch or something. Uh, but this is basically going to fit her perfectly. And I think we decided on version B here, which is uh, the red one there. It's got a little fake, uh, lapel on it. Or I guess it's a real lapel. It just doesn't go all the way around as a collar. But that's the one I'm going to make for her. And I think it's going to be really fun. I've been wanting to make stuff, but I, I've just, with all the fitting issues I've had and my weight fluctuating so much, I just felt kind of frustrated for making for myself. And I like sewing and I have no problems with learning techniques to sew. It's the fitting that I have problems with. But I've made stuff for her before and it's always fit perfectly because she is exactly the measurements on the pattern. I mean like exactly. There, there's nothing that needs to be changed. Um, she's a little short but this isn't a dress. This is just a vest so it should still fit her just fine. Um, I don't, I don't think there's going to be any problems with this. So that's what I'm going to make her. And that's kind of everything that I have planned, everything that's been going on. Um, let's just see what else. Like, I know that the, a lot of um, vloggers that I follow kind of always uh, kind of share some of their favorites of like what they've been up to and stuff. So um, I'll, I'll share a couple of things. Let's start off with my favorite uh, books that I've been reading so far. Um, again, I, I mostly read a lot of technical books and um, the one book that I have been listening to on Audible is Creative Ink, um, which has nothing to do with sewing actually. Um, <laughs> it is a book by Ed Cantamal from Pixar, who's I believe titled the CEO of Pixar, uh, but he's one of the um, founding uh, people from Pixar. I actually had gotten to meet him at a um, computer graphics convention uh, 10 years ago now. Wow, that's a long time. Uh, but he wrote a book and it's not on the history of Pixar, though it's portrayed the history of Pixar, but his um, reflection on managerial styles and how to be a good manager and mainly how to be a good manager of creative people. And so there's a lot of stories of how he got to Pixar and things in that sense, but it's really reflective of the story itself. It says at this point, this is what I learned by this time. So that's a good read or listen to if you like audiobooks. As far as what I've been watching, uh, there's a couple of things that I can share with you. The first one is The Repair Shop. The Repair Shop is something that I heard about way back in spring and I've been watching it on and off. It is on Netflix. I believe it's a British uh, production. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's made for Netflix or if it's something from the BBC or something. But basically, it is a... a repair shop. They are tied, I believe, to a museum where they get antiques from individuals, patrons who come in and they repair them back to either their original state or to a state where they can continue to their longevity and lifespan. And it's really interesting. It's really fun. It's really low key. And it's, it's kind of a mix of like the antique road show where they bring in an item and they tell its history and stuff like that but they go past that and they actually fix it and they share how they do some of the stuff about like how the mechanics of the little clockworks worked. Uh, they did like an old record player. Uh, they have a woodworker who had to fix like the corner edge of a jewelry box that was like over a hundred years old and so it's just really entertaining to watch and, and see how things change. They also have two ladies who do all the sewing for plushies. They do a lot of teddy bear repair and fixing dolls and things like that. So it's, it's very interesting and I, I've enjoyed it. So I am a big anime fan and one of my favorite manga 
uh, artists or manga writers, I guess, they write the whole story, not just the illustrations, who has also had all of her um, animes or all of her mangas translated to anime is, and I'm going to have to look at my phone to get this pronounced right, Rum, Rum, Rumiko Takahashi. And so she has done some of the most classic, iconic animes. Many of you, if you've ever been into anime, may have heard of Rama One and a Half. She's also done um, animes like Yutsura Atsura, which was an 80s anime, which that one is probably not as, as, as well known. Um, she's done one of my very favorites, which is Maison Koku, and that is by no means any kind. If you think anime is just robots and fighting, Maison Ikoku is like drama sitcom. Like it's got funny parts, but it's more of a drama and it's, it's a love story. Uh, but another really good one, which goes back kind of to the anime fighting battle stuff is Inuyasha which if you are a child of the 90s of any way, you probably saw it on um, Toonami back in the day on Cartoon Network. Um, but they have made a sequel to Inuyasha and the sequel is called, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna have to look up this here, Yashihimi Princess Half Demons. And so it's basically the next generation. So it's Inuyasha's children or child and his brother Shishomaru who I was uh, I always loved his brother's character um his children as well and um I don't want to give it away because it's, I could like just go on into this backstory um but it is about feudal Japan and they are gods and demigods and demons and so the well, they're de demons in the Japanese sense are like demigods, and so they have powers, but there's also a bridge to the future. So they go to future Tokyo and then they come back to feudal Japan and, and everything like that. But it's excellent. It's on Hulu, which I think you can actually watch the original Inuyasha series on Hulu as well. And I've been really enjoying that. Speaking of other nerdy type stuff that I've been watching, The Mandalorian. So I have been like saving The Mandalorian so that we could watch like at least two episodes at a time because it's one of those things like, oh, we can't leave it there. We gotta know what happens next. So I have been, I've been watching them regularly when they come out. But I will say, if you have not watched The Mandalorian or if you're just now watching The Mandalorian and haven't really experienced Star Wars, um, some of the outside Star Wars stuff, so if you're familiar with the background of who's producing all this stuff, so obviously it's John, John Fabio from uh, the Iron Man's who has been um, doing all the directing, or, or doing some of the directing, but all of the producing. But one of the other producers slash directors and writers is David Fillion, who did all the Star Wars cartoon series. And that's where you can really tell that he's put a lot of effort into Mandalorian because it all ties back in. So if you are watching this um, and there are characters that you're not familiar with, especially um, a week or two ago where they met the other Mandalorians, uh, those Mandalorians were in the cartoon series. And of course, if you're watching this, you've probably already heard the name Ahsoka. Uh, Ahsoka was a major character in the cartoon series. So if you have not watched The Mandalorian or if you want more insight to what's going on in The Mandalorian, here's what you need to do. You need to watch the Clone Wars series, all seven seasons on Disney Plus. Following that, you're gonna watch the Star Wars Rebels series on Disney Plus. So at the end of Star Wars Rebels, they end it right after the end of the war. So it ends with sort of a jump forward where they're like, oh yeah, we just destroyed the, the second Death Star there on Endor and everybody's free, blah, blah, blah. And that's where that story ends. Now, The Mandalorian takes place like a year or a few years immediately after that. 
so all the characters are still relevant and it just really goes into each other so i um encourage you if you are a fan of the mandalorian and you want some more backstory watch those two series you will not regret it if you are into the star wars universe so that's everything that i've been doing as far as sewing sewing plans knitting things i've been reading things i've been watching i'd love to hear in the comments below any of your thoughts and comments about any and all of this um like i said i haven't been doing a whole lot of sewing but i've got some plans going on um if you have any ideas from some beginner knitting uh projects or some more uh video tutorials those were really helpful i'd love to know in the comments or if you just want to know more about anime and star wars feel free to put those in the comments too because i could just go on for days about that so i hope you've enjoyed this episode of akram's ideas and thanks for watching but uh leave is my camera dead already no, I guess this play just went Let's see. So, another... Some of you, maybe... Let me get that all right.